Fellow Floridians, let's give a warm Florida welcome to the next President of the United States of America. What a glorious day to show off Florida. This is better than Iowa, it's better than New Hampshire. This is perfect. All those people are going to end up here at some point in their lives anyway, right? Today we welcome a man who represents... Uh, all the great things about this country. Somebody who has benefited and built up under a free enterprise system that has been under assault under this by this president. He believes in capitalism. He believes in small businesses. He has been a part of the business community that gives back to communities. When you look at what the strength of our communities and what our country is, it all stems from people who give back through that American spirit because they're allowed to achieve that success under freedom and free enterprise and capitalism that makes all of those things possible. We are pleased to welcome to the state of Florida a man whose values and character reflect the best of our nation to the world. Ladies and gentlemen, I don't have to tell you how critically important this election is for our children and our grandchildren and for our standing in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, this man, Mitt Romney, will not only be the Republican nominee, he will be the next president of the United States. Let's welcome him to Tampa, Florida. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Putnam has been kind enough to serve as my chairman in this state, so I'm counting on him to deliver Florida when this uh, nomination process gets in the way. Well, your primary, you're going to start voting in about two or three weeks, right? Is that right? Yeah, because you get absentee ballots and so forth. Now, your primary is a little later, but uh, but you're going to get started soon, so I want to make sure that you all get to the polls and do the right thing. I'd love to have your support. Thank you, Adam Putnam, our Commissioner of Agriculture, for your uh, welcoming me today and uh, being my chairman of the state. Thank you also to my son, this guy back here. Woo! It's my son, Craig. Yeah, yeah. He, is, uh, he is kind to, to be with me today. It is... Uh, uh, not always that I get to bring my son with me on the trail, but uh, but I decided to have him come along. He lives in San Diego. He's father of two children of his own. Uh, you know, why don't you have him say something? I don't, I'm not going to speak. Craig, why don't you say hi to everybody? Thank you. He's been doing this to me all day. He keeps on dragging me up to the stage. Um, it's great to be here. This is a wonderful place to campaign here in Florida. It's, it's been beautiful. And uh, we're very grateful for all the support from my dad. You know, he's he's shown throughout his career that he has the ability to turn things around. He did it in business, he did it at the Olympics, he did it in Massachusetts, and he's going to do it with our country as well, get our economy back on track. Let's give him a hand. Thank you. Thanks, Craig. Thank you, Craig. Well, now, I, I just had a tour of the uh, port here at Tampa. I don't know how many of you have had the chance to get around and see all that's going on here. 5,500 acres of, uh, of land here that's part of the port. You do a lot in Tampa that's famous around the country, but this port is uh, the biggest, as you know, in Florida. It accounts for some $8 billion of support to the local economy. Uh, manufactured products in Florida have gone through this port and now doubled over the last seven years. It's a, uh, it's a major economic engine in, uh, in Florida. And, of course, across the country, trade is a huge portion of what can create jobs. And, and trade can either be seen as a vehicle to create jobs for Americans, or instead it can be used as a political payback machine, where you use trade policy to take care of your friends and pay off political debts. And I'm afraid to say that our president has engaged in the latter, and not so much the former. Because over the last several years, the president, for instance, has said with regards to nations like Colombia and Panama and South Korea, where President Bush and his administration had negotiated trade agreements. President Obama put those agreements on hold. For three years, we waited for those agreements to be taken to Congress and voted on, ultimately approved. Why was he putting it on hold? Because there were people that supported President Obama that wanted those agreements to be either shelved or slowed down. So trade was used as a political feature as opposed to something that could create jobs. I, uh, I recognize as well the President has stalled the Trans-Pacific Partnership. That's a, that's a partnership agreement that's been worked on between Vietnam and Malaysia, the Philippines, nations like ourselves are part of that. New Zealand, 
and and that's something which has again been stalled. I'd love to see that accelerated because trade against create trade again creates jobs for Americans. The president's been failed has failed to get the WTO on track again, and and the longer that takes to get back on track, the more difficult it is for our our trade jobs to resume. And finally, I'll note that over the last uh, three years that the president's been in office, the European Union and China have negotiated some 44 different trade deals, bilateral deals with other nations. And during that time, guess how many new agreements we've negotiated? None. None. And, and, and those nations recognize that in order to put their people to work, they want to get their goods into foreign places. And, and so I, I'm concerned that we have a president that doesn't understand the power of trade for enhancing American employment and the prospects of American prosperity. Now, I, I know President Obama's a nice guy, but I just don't think he understands America. And I don't think he understands, I don't think he understands the economy. I think to create jobs, it helps to have had a job. And I, I spent my life in the free economy. I understand how business works. I understand what it takes to bring jobs to America. And I want to get Americans working again. I believe that middle-income Americans should have confidence that this is the best place in the world to get good jobs and to have rising incomes. Over the last three years, the median income in America, the median income in America has dropped by 10%. Now, your costs haven't dropped by that much. Your gasoline prices, your food prices, health care prices, those have gone up. Middle-income Americans have faced a very difficult time under President, under President Obama. It's time to have a president who understands the economy and how to get it working again, and I do, and I will. Now, now, I'm talking about trade, as you know, so let me just underscore a few things I want to do with regards to trade. I do want to negotiate bilateral agreements with other nations so that we can get our goods in other places in the world. I do want to make sure that we... Uh, we crack down on people who trade, who, excuse me, who cheat on trade deals, like China. Trade works well, but you have to make sure the people you're trading with follow the rules. And China hasn't been following the rules, and therefore we'll crack down on them and make sure they don't continue to cheat. I want to make sure that we put in place what I call the Reagan Economic Zone. What I mean by that? I want to create a group of nations that agree to, treat, uh, to, to trade on a free basis, but also they agree not to steal intellectual property from one another and not to manipulate their currency so as to take unfair advantage of one another. That economic free zone will allow America to sell goods around the world and put Americans to work. Look, I, I understand something about the economy having lived in it. I recognize that trade is good for jobs. In a, a nation like ours, which is the most productive in the world, we make more per person than any other nation in the world. For us to have opportunity for growth and high incomes, we need to sell our goods around the world. I know how to do that. I will fight to do that. But I'll make sure that we create agreements that work for us, not just for the other guys. And I'll make sure that the people we trade with follow those agreements. Now, I, uh, I want you to know I'm confident in the future of America. I believe our, our future is brighter than our past. I know some people are concerned about that. But you know what? All the doomsday scenarios you hear about are simply uh, based upon a continuation of what you're seeing going on in Washington. The people in Washington don't understand how America works. They think that what makes this country so successful economically is a government that tells the American people how to live their lives and how to run their businesses. They're wrong. What makes America great in an economic powerhouse is free people choosing their course in life. It is free Americans that will propel our future and make our future as bright as Ronald Reagan imagined when he said we would be a shining city on a hill. I love this country. I've learned uh, just as from a little boy about the beauty of this country as my mom and dad took me from national park to national park and took us around to see the beauty of America. I learned something about the people of America as I learned from my parents the stories of the heritage of this country and as I've spent, if I spent my life living in different parts of the country and coming to know my fellow Americans. I love the American people. I love this country. I believe in America. 
I believe the principles that built this country and that allowed us to become the most powerful nation in the history of the earth are the principles that will preserve and build an American century in the 21st century. I, uh, I know we're facing some tough times right now. I know a lot of Americans are out of work. Home values are down. People are sometimes discouraged. But I'm convinced that if we have a president who will tell the truth and will live with integrity and who knows how to lead and who knows how to grow an economy, that our future can be bright if we draw on the patriotism and the passion of the American people to work hard, to create, to innovate, and to plan for a great future. I intend to be that president with your help. Thank you so much. Great to be with you.